Okay, so Google has rolled out a bunch of new updates for BARD. And we should remember that BARD is still an experiment according to Google, but that it's an experiment that is getting a lot of attention and gradually they're improving it in a whole bunch of different ways. So the big update for this is basically BARD, one, getting access to a lot more languages or people being able to use it in a lot more languages, and two, being rolled out to a lot of new places. So in regards to the places, I think BARD now is fully available in the EU. It's available in Brazil. It's available in a lot of the countries that before didn't have access to it. The other big part of this update is that now it's available in over 40 languages. So this really allows people uh, to see the multilingual aspects of this model. And I think it's good to point out that perhaps it's not that this is a new model. This is probably the same model that we've had access to for quite a while. But what they've been doing is filtering out languages just for the simple fact that Google's obviously concerned about the bad press if it was to say something rude in a language or to give a not good response in a particular language. So over the past few months, they've been testing out the different languages. They've gotten native speakers in this. And this is one of the areas where Google is very careful about how they do the rollout. And while they get criticized a lot for it, I think it's a lot of that criticism is not always fair in that Google is trying to protect their reputation and doesn't want to get things wrong and therefore is very careful about how they're doing the rollout for this, perhaps more than some other companies out there. Anyway, so it's now available in 40 languages. Another thing that they've basically done is they've allowed you to be able to get those languages spoken to you as well. So Google has very extensive TTS system with the WaveNet voices and even some of the, the new Soundstorm voices. I'm not sure they're using the Soundstorm here, but you're able now to go in and get something generated in a different language and have that spoken to you in, in that language as well. So let's take a look at that. So if we come in here and basically ask it to do something in a different language, you can see here I'm asking it to write me a poem about a cat in the moonlight in Mandarin. It, it totally has the ability to be able to do this and go through it. Uh, and then I can come up here and actually just play. And you'll find that the gender changes depending on the language. They're using a bunch of different TTS here for this. One of the things that I really like uh, about this is that it gives you a translation uh, as well. But I was able then to basically ask it to, okay, write me the pinion for this poem as well. And it was able to go through it and do this. So you can do this in 40 different languages now and get a whole bunch of different outputs. It makes it much more accessible for people right across the world who are using this. So th this is a, a fantastic update and certainly one of the main features of this update in general. So the next new feature is the ability to upload a file. So if I come in here, you can see that I can upload a JPEG, a PNG, or a WebP file. And then once that file is uploaded, I can basically ask a question about that particular image. Okay, so here I've asked it, you know, what is in this image? Please describe it. And so we can look and see that, okay, the image is of a dog wearing glasses and some kind of wool clothing or something. Okay, and sure enough, it comes back pretty quickly and says the image shows a black pug dog wearing glasses and a sweater. So it is interesting that it knows that the sweater is like gray. I don't know about the small dark stripe in, in the front there. I also think it's really interesting that it says this image is likely a stock photo or prom promotional image for a product related to pugs or dogs in general. So to just give a, a, a shout out, I basically just downloaded the image from uh, Unsplash and we can see it's it's actually created by Charles Del Deluvio here. So I'm going to give that a, a thumbs up. Let's see if it knows where that image is. Okay, so it hasn't been able to find the exact picture online from Unsplash, but it seems to have been able to find some ideas of pictures like that. I think you also have to be careful with pictures of humans that it doesn't like it if you upload a, a picture of a human's face and may actually object to that. So here's another one that I uploaded, which I thought was really interesting. So I took one of my thumbnails and uploaded it to see what can it do with OCR. So it's using a, a particular version of Google Lens for doing this. So that can actually do OCR. It can read what's in images and stuff like that. So you can see here that it's not only read what's in the image, 
but it also understands how that relates to what this actually is. So this is a thumbnail for a video I made a few weeks back for the MPT30B open source model. And you can see that it, it certainly knows what it is, right? But it also knows that it was trained on H100s and that's not in here. So it's combining both the image, the, the details that it got from here, as well as information that it's basically gotten from the web here. So it's interesting that it says the image can be found on the web pages of Mosaic ML. I don't think that's, as well as some review sites. And that's partly because we took this sort of idea from them and the colors from them, I'm guessing there. So when I tell it that this is a YouTube thumbnail, what is the link for the YouTube? Sure enough, it knows that exactly what the video was called uh, and it actually gives the URL for the YouTube and I've checked it and it's the correct URL. Now it gets the date wrong and the number of views, I think is quite a lot more than that actually does know a little bit about, okay, what I talked about in there, or it's just hallucinating very well in there. And I find it very amusing that it basically says, you know, if you're interested in learning about this 30B model, I recommend watching the video. It is a good introduction to the model. So if you haven't watched it, go and have a look at the video in there. But both these sort of examples show that the ability to analyze images now is really here. It's one of the things that has been promised with GPT-4, but very few people have had access to it because it does use a lot of GPU power in the back end. I think that because Google has built Google Lens in the past and has made it available, they've got a step ahead with doing some of this stuff, getting it to basically be into something like this. Okay, so another feature that they've basically added in here is the ability to take something like this, where I've asked it to generate a blog post, and we can come in here and we can actually modify the response. So we could make it longer and it will then basically regenerate making this longer. We can regenerate to make it shorter. So you can see in this case now, really hasn't probably made it that much longer here by the looks of it. We can make it simpler and we can see that it's taken some of the information out there and perhaps simplified it. But it's certainly worth looking at. And there are a number of different ways to modify. You can make something shorter. You can make it longer. You can make it simpler, more casual, or more professional. So I think this is going to help a lot of people when they're writing things for a particular use case. You'll be able to play around with this and pro probably still do multiple passes at it. But you'll be able to take something and then just tweak it a little bit. I think this is definitely an interesting thing that we haven't really seen in other language models. So this... My guess is features like this will be coming to other services over time. Also, we've now got a whole bunch of different export options. We can export to Google Docs. We can basically put it into a Gmail draft for doing this. And then we can also do look at related searches for this on Google now. So just sort of wrapping up this, I've gone through some of the key updates that they've basically introduced into BARD here. You can see that we've got I would say the big one is the addition of new languages. And certainly for those people who haven't had access, suddenly now you have access to basically try some of these things out. Another one I didn't actually cover in here was basically that you can now uh, pin th threads and you can then basically share conversations with other people. So if you've got something in Bard that you want to share with people, you'll be able to do that. Also for Python code, you'll be able to not just export to Colab now, but you can also export out to Replit here. So overall, I would say that this is a great update for Bard, and it shows you how hard the team has been working on this. I know some of the product managers that do work on Bard, and I would say that often they feel frustrated that they're working on a lot of cool stuff that people in the public don't get to see. So every time that something like this comes out, come back and have a look at Bard. You need to understand that Google's in a very unique position compared to the other companies in that it can't actually serve the best models all the time, just because the amount of compute needed to serve those models to the scale of people using Google is just not practical. So they're constantly having to work out, okay, what they can serve and what features they can basically add to this. So a lot of things like BARD, it, you know, while it's an experiment, it's still an experiment that a lot of people are working on and a lot of people are working to improve every day. So go and have a look at the updates to Bard this weekend and let me know what you think in the comments. We'd love to hear from people what they like, what they don't like, what you would like to see in Bard going forward. 
And as always, if you uh, like videos like this, please click like and subscribe. I will be doing a lot more updates for these kind of things. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.